All right, so I put it out there. Um, if people were interested in my analysis of what is a woman, the Matt Walsh Daily Wire documentary uh, addressing trans issues and things like that. So I have uh, YouTube up live and then I have uh, my Instagram up live. So I watched the documentary over the course of like three days, kind of just like tidbits at the end of the night. And I was taking notes on it and I'm trying to get the, I'm trying to do my thing, which is trying to find the uniting principles that we can all kind of get on board with. Uh, I, think, I think the first thing that needs to get recognized is this is a documentary and most documentaries are going to have an agenda. Okay, now it's, that doesn't mean that it's dishonest. It can be very, very honest, but it's an agenda of, of this is what I believe to be right. Here's what I believe to be happening. And I'm going to try and put it out there into the world to bring people over to my side. So there's a great uh, documentary called uh, Game Changers about, um, I think that's what it's called, about uh, with uh, uh, James Wilkes about uh, vegan diets. And he actually had Chris Kresher on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. He, he and uh, Chris Kresher came on and the science holds up about what was in that documentary. The science holds up for vegan diets. What doesn't hold up is the, the leap that that then takes, the inferences from those facts. So in history class, I talk about fact, inference, and judgment. So there's facts, but then there's inferences that come from that facts. And that's where that vegan documentary just kind of spirals off. Okay. So this one is a similar thing. Okay. It's Daily Wire. It's Matt Walsh. These are conservatives. Okay? It's important to recognize that they are conservatives. And the role that conservatives have in our society is a very important one. The role that progressives have in our society is a very important one. You need each other, conservatives and progressives. So I understand the role of conservatives. And what it is, is to hold on to what is dear. Because a lot of what is, uh, what has gotten us to this place of such unbelievable advancement is the reality that uh, these were hard-fought battles to, to, to acquire. This, this knowledge that we have acquired over all of human evolution is a lot. And we don't want to throw that all away. What got us here? We don't want to throw that away. And it's the job of the conservatives to say, hey, look at what happened in the past. That's going to guide us a lot. But we can't solve the future problems merely with the solutions of the past. So we need progressives. Also, by definition, the conservatives want to hold on to what we have. And they're not as forward thinking than someone who is progressive. And this goes back to the way the brain works. Left brain, right brain, order chaos. If you Jordan Peterson people out there all of this kind of stuff. And uh, the people like Matt Walsh are going to be more on the order side, boundary, borders, things like that. When Donald Trump was running and his big thing that got him into the whole, you know, into like legitimacy um, with the conservatives was build the wall. It wasn't just about the wall. It wasn't about the Me the border between Mexico and America. It's a general statement about having boundaries. This is 2015, 2016. This is when a lot of the crazy stuff on campuses started to spiral out of control about gender, about race, about all this kind of stuff, the changing definitions. People were like, I can't keep up. What, what about the old way of doing things? We need to set some binaries in the world and stuff like that. And Donald Trump came in and said, build the wall. And it was not just about the wall. It was about taking a stand of where we draw lines. I talk about lines a lot. I'm going to talk about lines here. Uh, so I understand that. I understand the idea of how, the, how spoiler, how this ends is he goes home to his wife because Jordan Peterson says, ask your wife what a woman is and you'll get the answer. And he goes home and his wife says the dictionary definition, adult human female. He's like, oh, that's it. Okay, that's it. Well, perhaps, but there's a reason why the first podcast I did and the third podcast I did and Oh, in total, eight podcasts with seven different transgender people and then several Instagram lives with transgender people that I have done. The reason is because people like Buck Angel exist. People like Xander Keg exist. Luca Eichlodine, you know, Blair White, many people know. Okay. Um, Mac Beggs, these people exist. Okay. And you could just say, well, Buck Angel, I'm going to say use him because he was recently on my podcast and I do say him and I'll talk about why. But he exists, and to say, well, adult human female, technically, yeah. So is he a woman? Definitions matter. They matter.
Okay. Cause it's a way that we're going to communicate with each other. And, um, the cool thing about having these conversations with, with diverse trans people is they draw lines in different places. And that is what's interesting to me. And for those of you, you follow this account for a reason. I think I'm, I'm kind of helping people to guide through this kind of thinking. And the way I explain it to my class is we all draw different lines, different places. We all have our lines. Okay. If you don't have a line of too far conservative, too far, you know, left brain or too far, you know, liberal progressive, too far right brain, then you will fall off a cliff. You need to draw lines. And what's fascinating is every trans person that I've talked to, they all have a line somewhere. Now, there are people, and this some were highlighted in this documentary, that don't. That don't have a line anywhere. It's whatever you think it is. It's complete chaos. It's complete no boundaries, no borders, and stuff like that. That is a recipe for disaster. Absolutely, just like the ultimate order, you know, 1984 or something like that is a recipe for disaster, authoritarian disaster. So is no borders, no boundaries. It's absolutely a recipe for disaster. Okay, so we all draw lines different places. And it's fascinating how in the trans community, they draw different lines. Of course, of course, because we all draw different lines. Every, whatever... Um, a minority group you are, or a marginalized group you are, you are going to draw different lines about what you consider racist or sexist or homophobic or transphobic. You're all going to draw different lines. And the beautiful thing is we can communicate about why your lines are different than mine with genuine curiosity. It's amazing. It's really cool to be like, why, why are your lines different than my lines? Hmm. Because there's a million different things. It's how the brain works. It's experiences you've had. It's all this kind of stuff, which is fascinating about getting to know your fellow humans. So, so what I found is like um, some people are calling Leah Thomas uh, like this generation's Jackie Robinson. And some trans people say that is absurd. I would argue that that is absurd. I'm not saying that Leah Thomas doesn't have a right to live her life. But to say that she is taking a stand like Jackie Robinson, well, no, 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 no. Because Jackie Robinson was the first. Leah Thomas is not the first. She's the first to break records and get on the top of the podium. Because of, sorry, but disadvantages that the other women, biological women are, are up against compared to Leah Thomas, okay, who went through puberty as a man. Okay, now that, there's a lot of, you know, logic behind that but but to say that leah thomas is the jackie robinson because they won that's not why jackie robinson is jackie robinson jackie robinson is not jackie robinson and celebrated because of him winning it's because he broke the barrier that's that's a better argument it would be like the first transgendered person to do other things but you know i had mac beggs on my podcast mac beggs I would say would be more of a Jackie Robinson. Mac Beggs, biological woman, wanted to compete with the men at a disadvantage, went through puberty as a girl at a disadvantage. That's more of a Jackie Robinson. And ended up on the podium on a men's, in a men's wrestling tournament. You know, Nong Rose, the Muay Thai fighter, transitioned from male to female and kept fighting the dudes. That's, that's an interesting one. Okay. Uh, when it comes to sports, which was covered in this podcast, they say uh, women are at a physical disadvantage to men. That, again, is missing nuance. Big explosive movements. We're talking about uh, combat sports and things like that. Weightlifting, like Laurel Hubbard in the Olympics. Absolutely, that is an unfair advantage. But, interesting thing, the number one ultra marathon run in the world is a woman named Courtney Dowalter. When she did the uh, the Bigfoot or Moab, like 240, like a 240 mile, like a uh, crazy ultra marathon. She won. It was 240 miles. She beat the second place. It was all these men. She beat the second place by more than a full marathon, by like 27 miles. If you look at the record books for marathon swimming, not Leah Thomas, short sprint swim, sprint, short uh, distance swimming is a sprint that's explosive, long distance, like swimming from Cuba to Florida type of stuff, those records are held by a majority of women, biological women. Fat distribution and things like that, more buoyancy, interesting stuff. So you can't merely say that women are at a disadvantage in sports. 
Hmm? It depends on which sports, what kind of situation, and things like that. Okay, that, that that's definitely part of it. Uh, so I'm just looking down. I, I have a, a couple of notes that I took down. Uh, so forgive me. Um, but one of the the the, the real uh, the real crux here is trying to get the definition. Now, I am sure that Matt Walsh did some interesting editing when people walked up and gave him definitions and he kept that out to make it look like he's just genuinely curious. And it's the same issue that I had when I posted about Steven Crowder, which is I don't think Steven Crowder actually wants to have his mind changed. I don't. Uh, I don't think Matt Walsh actually wants to know. Um, yes, I will save this on my feed. Uh, so, so Matt Walsh probably edited this. But I was thinking, there's, there's like the, the kind of conservative traditional dictionary definition, adult, human, female, okay? But then what do you do with like the ultra woke, like the ultra woke, who don't like to define things kind of like postmodernism, they don't like to define things by definition. <laughs> um, I came up with a definition, I'm gonna run it by you. Okay, so I wrote it down. And I, this is, I'm just kind of playing this out, but I'm gonna try and define this for the ultra, ultra woke who can't define what a woman is. Okay, so the people on like Dr. Phil and stuff like that, you know, the woman with a beard and, you know, whatever, um, non-binary types. Okay, here's the definition I came up with, curious thoughts. Okay, a woman is, this is what I would want, I don't know if any like super woke trans activists will watch this, but if you know one, share it with them. See what, I'm trying to represent them. A woman is someone who feels and identifies that they lie on at least 51% of the female side of the male female spectrum, something like that. Cause it's a lot about self identification and a woman would be someone who lies on more than 50% on the female side of the male female spectrum, something along those lines. Uh, you know, I'm interested in, in understanding people that I disagree with. I'm interested in understanding why people think things that are just so easily dismissed as loony as crazy. That's interesting to me. Uh, here's the thing about um, the definition is I think that you can look at, uh, they talk a lot about um, like biology versus sociology, you know, nurture versus nature, uh, uh, you know, gender versus uh, sex. Okay. Good way to think about this, I think is, would be um, hardware versus software. Hardware, what genitals do you have? Software, how do you see yourself? Okay, and there are absolutely masculine women and feminine men. Absolutely. Okay, and there are many biological women who are more masculine, have more masculine traits than many men do. They exist. They absolutely exist. Okay, now should they uh, change their body to represent a certain look? They can. They can. If they're going to do it anywhere, it is here. It is in America where you can live the life that you want. That is the fundamental idea of this country is you can live whatever life you want. It's freedom. This is the eagle. This is the, the flag. This is why I love this country. And you should too, because this is the place for everyone who wants to live free. You know, the, 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 the wretched refuse yearning to breathe free, what it says on the giant colossus at the bottom of the, of the Statue of Liberty. This is the place for you. So you're a weirdo. You're an outcast. You're an outcast. You don't feel like you fit into your skin. This is the place for you. And we need to make sure the Constitution upholds your rights. Now, where it gets tricky is um, was it Oliver Wendell, the uh, the uh, uh, Supreme Court justice from you know whatever, 200 years ago, said something along the lines of, "You have the right to swing your fist until right up until it hits the tip of my nose." Okay. Yeah. Okay. So at what point is your identity, your trans identity, going to be essentially punching me in the nose? And at what point is it you just swinging your fist? That's the conversation that we can have. That's the conversation you can have. Someone says, can't you just be a masculine woman? Yes, you can. And can't you also just dress up though any way you want? Dress your body up? You want to pierce your nose? You want to pierce your ears? You want to change your body? Yeah, you can do it here. It might make people uncomfortable. America is not the place for comfort, guys. This is the place where it's sink or swim. This is the shark tank. That's the way America is. And people get very uncomfortable with certain things. I'm okay with that. Okay, this is the place. So what we have to do is argue, where does your gender ideology interfere with my way of living? And that's a valid question. And that's where we are going to draw the lines. Uh, 
So uh, that's a good way to kind of, of think about it is I think hardware and software. Your software is your gender Id identity, or your gender, and then your hardware is your sex. Might be a way to kind of think about it. Uh, Matt Walsh. Here's an interesting thing about Matt Walsh. I think he's closed-minded. I think he means well to some degree. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, okay? Um, I think he means well. Here's the thing about Matt Walsh. He posted somewhere, and this is just kind of hearsay, but I believe it. Supposedly, Matt Walsh said that he would kill a thousand gorillas to save one human life. Okay, so he values human life over animals. Okay, so it's a very conservative idea. I will kill a thousand gorillas to save one human life. Okay. Someone responded on Twitter, and part this is this is crude. So any students watching or anything like that, um, they said, "Would you suck a thousand dicks to save one human life?" And what did Matt Walsh do? He blocked them. Didn't respond. Blocked them. Now, that's a crude way to put it, sure. It's a valid question. It's a valid question. You'll kill a thousand gorillas because you value human life so much. But you'd kill a sentient, a sentient animal. You know, an animal that even has some self-awareness. I mean, gorillas and stuff, they can sign. They can talk about their emotions. You would kill a thousand gorillas to save one human life. Would you perform fellatio on a thousand men to save one human life. And he can't answer that question because he's an ideologue. You know what? I would actually love to see Matt Walsh be presented with that question and wrestle through it. There's no good answer for a conservative ideologue like him to that question. What is he going to say? Like, yeah, line him up three at a time. And like, is he going to do something like that? Or is he going to say, no way? Why? Diseases. All right, they'll wear condoms. Why? This taps into Jonathan Haidt's moral foundations. The, he puts these ideas in the book, The Righteous Mind. They're really interesting. Like if you have a rotisserie chicken, you put a condom on, you have sex with a rotisserie chicken. Is it wrong to eat that chicken? And people say, yes. Logic your way through that. Come on, conservatives. Logic your way through it. Logic your way through it's wrong to perform fellatio on a thousand men to save a human life. It's interesting. But that's what ideology does. It kind of spirals you off and you have to take these stands. And, and it would be great if Matt Walsh was like, oh man, what would I do? It would, be, it, would be, it would disrupt my marriage. Maybe I'd like it. And then that would be a whole different kind of crazy thing. You know, uh, uh, Larry David had this joke where they were like, you know, he didn't want to get a massage or something from a man. Like, what are you worried you're going to like it? He's like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried I'm going to like it. <laughs> like, it's funny. Um, but uh, that's something about Matt Walsh, I think, that is not um, insignificant. Okay, is he doesn't know how to deal with those kind of things. You're gonna take this stand. How far will you take that? Because you can't logic your way through why you shouldn't perform fellatio on a thousand people to save a life. And yet, I think he would be very disruptive with that kind of idea. Um, so if you say, well, his his sexual ethics, it would be a violation. It would be a sin. It would be a sin to do that, perform that sexual act. It's not a sin. To kill somebody? Well, I'm not actually killing them. It's a trolley concept, but I think that's interesting. Um, okay, so another thing that I'll open up to, to Q&A, but uh, another thing that, that's really important about this trans issue that is fascinating. I talked to one of my, my good friends who's um, a gay guy, and, uh, and he you know, is like part of his identity, but not everything, obviously. It's just like something that he just is. You know? He's just like, that's who he likes. Um, he's a really good friend. I ran this by him, and he said it kind of changed his way of thinking. Identity. Identity really matters. And this concept, I saw a billboard in Hollywood, like Hollywood and Highland or something like that. Uh, identity, the, there's, there was something that says like, it's like a trans rights um, uh, billboard. And it says, you are who you believe to be or something like that. Like, you are who you think you are. You are who you identify as. No. No, no. Um, yeah, I think it came up on Twitter, by the way. The Matt Walsh thing, I think it was on Twitter. Um, you're not who you think you are. That's not true. And that's a big part of this documentary. This documentary is like, no, 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 you're not, you can't just make up whatever you are. So what is, what is your identity? Your identity is a mix. Your identity is who you see yourself as and how the world sees you. It's a combination. It's a combination. People who aren't self-aware. It's like, I think I'm this. The world sees me as this. 
Which one is your identity? It's not who you say you are because you can say that you're anything. It's what does the world see you as? And along those lines, let's take some of my friends like Buck Angel, Xander Keg, et cetera. Mac Beggs, Corinna Cohn, people that I've had on the podcast, you know, Blair White, to say that how does Blair White see herself, woman? How does the world see her as a woman? Buck Angel, Buck Angel, who, if you don't know who he is, he sees himself as a man. He's a biological female. He sees himself as a man. He walks into a store. Everyone in that store sees him as a man. So his identity for self matches his identity to the world. That seems like a stronger sense of identity than these people that just say they are whatever and whatever the world says is of no consequence to them. That's a line that I have. I say, uh uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You can't just say, I can't just say that I'm whatever it is. It could be a racial thing. It could be any kind of adjectives. No, no, no. It's your identity is a mix of how you see yourself and how the world sees you. So what do we do with the Xander Keds and the, the, the Mac Beggs and the Buck Angels? What do we do? That's an interesting thing. Okay. Um, so... So that's a mistake, I think, of a lot of the trans identity. And then it gets to pronouns, and it gets to the non-binary Z, uh things are odd. But um, the, like Buck Angel's pronouns, him, his, yeah, yeah. Because everyone wouldn't even ask what his, what his pronouns are. Blair White, no one's asking what your pronouns are. It's a woman. You could say, like, no. Okay, no, but she sees herself as a woman. The world sees herself as a, sees her as a woman. That is not to be ignored, I would say. Um, the last thing I want to say, and then I'll open up to the questions. I, I'm not ignoring the questions. I want to get those. But the last thing I'll say is Matt Walsh identifies as a Christian. I had a, a meeting with a, a friend of mine who's a pastor today at lunch, and it was it was really awesome. And uh, we expressed our, our frustrations over a lot of public Christians. So it's the Charlie Kirks of the world and Matt Walsh. Matt Walsh is a Christian. Do you conservative Christians, where is the love? Jesus preached a lot of things. The underlying bedrock of everything in Christianity is love. That's the bedrock. And don't give me this shit about, well, it's not loving to let people live in delusion. I'm not buying that. Okay? You work people through their delusions with love. With love. And the fact that Matt Walsh doesn't have that, the fact that Charlie Kirk doesn't express love to every single person, especially the people that he sees as sinners or wrongheaded. Do you not read the Bible? Who do you think hung out with Jesus? It was gamblers and robbers and prostitutes, and he immersed himself in them. It's very frustrating. Matt Walsh is looking to dunk on people of a marginalized community that are deeply, deeply struggling. Suicide rates, depression rates, people who are mutilating their bodies, who are misguided, and he is judging them and embarrassing them? What? There is nothing Christian about that. And how dare you do this in the name of someone who said love above all? It's a very frustrating thing, guys. Um, And I also, as someone who doesn't talk about it much, but as someone who uses Christianity to help me get through life, I am extremely frustrated with conservative Christians because this is what turns people off to Christianity is people like Matt Walsh and Charlie Kirk who hammer that flag, hammer that that nail over. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Then act like it. 
That's very, very frustrating. Um, and I didn't see that. I didn't see enough love in this. I didn't see enough love in this documentary. And that's, that's a, a very frustrating thing. So um, that's kind of my analysis. Uh, I'll open up the questions now so we can do um, all kinds of questions. So uh, if you can do uh, put questions in the thing, I'll, I'd love to answer them. So uh, what should the approach be? It's a good question. So how do you approach this? Well, look, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. But I think it's the way that I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to show care. Look at the way that I interact with people that disagree with me. It's hard on comments. Sometimes I can be snarking comments, but I'm talking to people. I am trying to model it. I don't wear a cross. I don't talk about my faith that much. I'm trying to live a good life. And that's a guidebook that I have that seems to help me. But Matt Walsh can be curious. He can push back. But be loving. Soften up. These are people who are struggling with life. And aren't we all? The arrogance of someone like Matt Walsh, that he has it all figured out. You know what? Boy, Connor's in here. Like, you know what? Matt Walsh, go do some DMT. Go take a hero's dose of, uh, of psilocybin. Okay? Humble yourself. You think you know about the world? Mm. Humble yourself a little bit. Okay? And I get it. You worry that, that it's going off hell in a handbasket. You know, Ben Shapiro just did a rant on Kim Kardashian, how a mother of four should not be acting this way and stuff like that. Like, I get it, Ben. That's your thing. That's your, your stance. I get it. I understand we need conservatives in society. But if you are going to say that you're a Christian... Yeah, these guys, these guys who are so confident in their beliefs, you need to be thrust into another dimension. That's why, you know, psychedelics exist. Come on, Roland Griffiths, let's, let's get this, let's get this thing going so we can get some of these people that are so confident in their beliefs to, to see it. And if you, if you do the research on, on psychedelics, it's way better for the people that are more left brain, the more conscientious. It's really good for people who have like, um, like habit, like the, the obsessive compulsive habits. Because it throws you into massive chaos. And if you are already massive chaos, I would say lay off the psychedelics because you're already over there. That's why schizophrenics should not be playing with psychedelics. But to these conservative crew, with a guide, um, it's worth looking into. Yeah. Um, okay, so oh, some questions. So put them in the questions. Here we go. Uh, let's see. And I'll do this until it cuts me out. I totally get your point. Can you name one thing or argument that Matt Walsh has got right though? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No. Matt Walsh is doing something really important here too. Okay. Yeah. He's drawing a line. He's bringing awareness about Lupron. He's bring, that the drug that they're giving people. He's bringing awareness about, about um, the potential cliff that we're headed toward. He's calling out the crazy elements of trans community that my friends in the trans community that are very reasonable, shout out to my boy Buck Angel again, like that, that are really upset about. The thing that, that gets Buck Angel to just like weep is the detransitioners. And now it's thousands of people. That is hor horrifying. And Matt Walsh is bringing awareness to that. So I appreciate Matt Walsh doing that. I really do. It's it's the it's it's the way he does it. Yeah, Connor. Just come best friends. <laughs> um, it's the way he does it. And it's it's gonna turn people off to to his message. That's why people don't watch it. People should watch this if it was done better. And he's too close-minded. He's too close-minded to to wrestle with the nuance. He's feigning wrestling with the nuance. He doesn't really have it. So I think that I think that there are benefits to to this. I think there are. I think it's it's a it's a good doc. It has me, moments of, of good stuff. When he talks about Alfred Kinsey and what Kinsey did, yeah, that's important. I was watching my wife and I was like, oh, Kinsey. I laid out all the stuff about his studies and then it went into it. I was like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm on I'm on the right track. He's bringing awareness, 
And that awareness is the first step. It's the first step to many steps where you and I in this you know, politically homeless, kind of wandering around trying to figure it out, open-minded crew are going to disagree. And I have people that are very far left and people who are very far right in here. And hopefully we can, we can work on each other and, and mix it up. And then the left will be like, oh, I don't really like this, this compromise, but okay. And the right says, I don't really like this compromise, but okay. And that's how we move forward. And then you get to vote. And then you get to vote for whatever you want. You're not going to get everything you want. But you know what? You actually probably don't want to get everything you want because you're not nuanced. I'm not nuanced enough to really understand everything going on. So we need one another to help shape our arguments better. Uh, let's see. All right. Do I believe that there is a difference between Christians like Matt and Charlie who are being, who are selling something uh, versus actual Christians in the real world? I also get tired of being compared to people like that um, because they go viral. Uh, yeah, I don't even think that uh, that selling something is necessarily bad. You know, I'm a I'm a capitalist. Uh, but if you sacro if if you choose to follow the Bible, you choose to follow Jesus. That's a that's no small thing. That is a huge. You're committing your life to this. You're gonna say it over and over again, all over social media and all over the world. Okay, so you're committed to this. This is what you've hinged your life on. This ideology, Christianity. Okay. It's freaking hard. So you're, you can't sacrifice that for any piece of gold. So I don't think that you, I, don't, I think you can make a lot of money doing Christian things. I don't, I think the second that you sacrifice what the guidebook, the Bible, the guidebook tells you to do, um, I think that that's a problem. How are Christianity and capitalism comp, uh, compatible? Good question. Uh, they absolutely are. Capitalism, Adam Smith capitalism, is the way to uplift people. It can be abused by the people at the top who are in positions of power to maintain that power and crush the people below. But it doesn't have to be. In fact, if you live according to that guidebook, you won't. Oh, that's really hard. Everyone who gets to the top becomes really corrupted. Yeah. So maybe they're not following the guidebook. Look, Jesus, the man, Jesus, the myth, whatever. You want to take Jesus. What would Jesus do with a hundred billion dollars? I don't know. But if you are in those positions of power, you are a capitalist, you're at the top of this socioeconomic hierarchy. It's a good thing to ponder. What would you do with massive amounts of power? And it's good for all of you. I ask this to my students. What would you do? You know, there's great stories about like, a, like uh, two people in law school, Lincoln and Nixon. Nixon was told you don't have the, the moral compass to be in law. And uh, Lincoln said he refused to represent people who he thought were guilty. So what happens when they took power? Well, Nixon became horribly corrupted and Lincoln saved the union. So how you act, I don't think that uh, power corrupts the whole thing of like absolute cor power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely i don't buy into that i think power reveals i think if you can what's what's stopping you from behaving badly is it fear of a repercussion what what's stopping you from from behaving terribly um because with tremendous power and wealth etc those barriers seem to disappear a lot so be prepared because you might be in a position of power someday and you should start acting that way small. That's one of the things I, I tell my students and um, I have all kinds of exercises in my class about stuff like that. Um, what is this? Would I support a Jimmy Dore Tulsi Gabbard People's Party ticket? Um, Jimmy Dore, I've actually spent time with him at my friend's uh, comedy, at his house he used to have the comedy show and Jimmy Dore would always hang out there. It was like, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, I think Jimmy Dore is funny and he's, he's onto some stuff, but I don't think he knows the inner workings of how to run things. I want someone who can run things. I like my ticket, like have my, my way would be a Jocko Willink, Tulsi Gabbard combination. Jocko Willink has run things. He runs a corporation at Echelon Front. He ran the West Coast operations of the Navy SEALs, Tulsi Gabbard, 
I adore Tulsi. I think Tulsi is really important. I think she will be really important. I think she's going to be in history books. We're just not sure how yet. Um, I hope. Uh, but she understands more of like the nastiness in government. Uh, but she's never been in charge of anything big. Jocko has. So that, that would be like my ideal. But I don't think we're ready for it. I think that things have to get bad before we are willing to gamble on that. I think that what happens is um, that we take the devil we know over the devil we don't because things are pretty good. A lot of people have food in their refrigerator. They have water when they turn on the spigot. When that stuff goes away, then you get more desperate. And I hope that we don't have to get there. But I don't think we're going to see Tulsi in a position of power until things are really, really dark. And that, that bums me out. And I hope I'm wrong. I really do. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, I think that's all the questions. So um, that's it. I really appreciate doing this. I uh, appreciate you guys on, uh, on YouTube too. Uh, this is a fun way to kind of work this out. And hopefully in the comment section, people can, can go back and forth and, uh, and kind of work out these ideas because this technology is awesome. If we use it right, this technology is amazing. I'm a huge Rage Against the Machine fan. And one of the lines is, but the sun has not yet set. It's a song, uh, Darkness. But the sun has not yet set the bass and drums and microphone a threat. Instagram doesn't like me. They shadow ban me. But I'm still here, my fuckers. So, pardon my language. But uh, we're going to use this. We're going to use this to come together. And there is a radical middle that has conservative thinkers and liberal thinkers that say, I don't like the extremes on the other side. I'm tired of them running things. I'm tired of these people in positions of power who should not be there. We want the best and brightest in these positions. And, uh, and I'm, I'm very happy to be uh, a, a part of that. And I, and I really appreciate, I appreciate this, this account a lot. It's very, very cool for me. So cool. Thank you guys very much. Have an awesome weekend. Oh, and happy Father's Day. I'm going to go play with my kids right now.